Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture. I am standing here today with Ian Epp who is on the Canola Council of Canada and we're talking about combine settings at swath timing. So nice to have you Ian, it's great to have you here. Nice to be on. So combine settings, I mean I think most people kind of figure hey you know I set my combine I go but there's a lot of differences in what the settings should look like, things that you should be watching out for right? Yeah, there's a lot of things we can look at. Canola is maybe a bit trickier than some other crops just because they're really small seeds. And so the first step is just, you, the biggest problem growers have with combine settings is probably losses coming out the back. And those are sneaky. If what's coming in the grain tank is not looking quite right, it's easy to make an adjustment. You kinda, you're seeing that tank to tank, but it's easy to have a couple bushels going out the back. It's not uncommon to show up at a farmer's field and see three, four bushels going out the back, which is a significant amount of bushels that you've grown, you've spent time growing, and not only are they not going in the bin, but they're going out the back into the field where we're gonna deal with them next year with volunteer canola. So what, what would be some of the things, like how often should you actually be going out and checking to see, you know, are you losing stuff out the back end? That's one of the tough ones, because you know, the more often, the more likely you're gonna catch it, and there's differences. It will change over time. That being said, I realize time is busy, but the key is, do probably checking somewhat regularly and if you're not checking at all making it as easy for yourself as possible so it can be as quick and as painless as possible so whether that's getting a drop pan or having somebody in place to check combines first step is to see do I have losses do I need to make check a cha change to my settings or what am I doing is it working actually working pretty well mm -hmm. do environmental conditions tend to change how much is coming out the back end that's one of the things that can change so you know, maybe you, on a hot, dry day, if you think about the air going through your combine, what that material is like, it's dry, maybe it's busting up super good. In canola, it's odd where maybe the feeder house actually might be doing most of the threshing before it even gets to the rotor part of the combine. Once you get to midnight and you're still combining that same field, now it's humid, things are damper, the air is a lot cooler. Now that might change our settings. So we might have settings that we might want to check losses during the heat of the day, and then maybe losses in cooler. And that we'd be checking them every day, but maybe we have a hot daytime setting and then come sometime in the evening, we say, no, let's switch over to these other settings. Generally, losses do seem to creep up as we get cooler and wetter into the evenings. Okay, and then let's say you look at, you, you check your back end, see how much you're losing out the back. If you do have substantial losses, what is the system of kind of where you would go to check your settings on your combine? What would you be changing? The first thing is to figure out where the losses are coming from. So losses out the back of the combine is just the accumulation of all the losses. Now, so the key is where they're coming from and what do they look like? Is it just canola seed coming out the back of the combine? Uh, is it with some of the straight cut varieties that are really good pod shatter, they hold the seeds really good, that means they're harder to thresh. So sometimes we can see whole unthreshed pods coming out if you're using your normal settings, but maybe it's a variety that's a little harder to thresh. So what's coming out? If it's uh, whole pods coming out, we need to be more aggressive threshing. So tightening up the rotor, spinning, making it go a little faster. Those are rotor losses. If we're seeing just canola seeds coming out, often it's more to do with the cleaning system on the back end. So I'd be looking at my fan settings, maybe reducing my fan, maybe changing my sieves, maybe opening up the sieves a little bit more to make sure that canola is dropping into the sieves. The other thing is just how fast are we driving. Usually the harder we push our combines, the more losses come out. These combines have tons of horsepower and they're built for hard to thresh crops, corn, uh, you know, wheat, things like that. Canola is easy to thresh, so horsepower is not the limiting factor. Even though you can push the stick forward, that might not be the right point. On some combines, you might only run 70% engine load, but right. the cleaning system is actually the limiting factor. And as soon as we get over, I don't know, sometimes it's a speed or an engine factor, that combination of maybe three and a half mile, four miles an hour, or a certain engine load, the losses will start to go up really quickly. Okay, and do those losses typically change if you're straight cutting versus swathing? Again, the, the varieties can be a little bit different on how they thresh. So okay. that's one of the things. So yeah, straight cut varieties, some of them can be harder to thresh. Again, you have the horsepower to deal with that, but you got to change the combine settings to be a bit more aggressive on the threshing. The other thing would be that on a, depending on how, what your straight cut variety looks like, you can be more uneven. Right, mm. you'll be really ripe, but you'll have some areas that maybe still have a little bit of green. Or the canola is ripe, but there's some green weed material in there. Uh, a swath variety is usually the most even, right? Corner to corner, if it's been swathed for you know 10 days, two weeks, what you're getting in one corner is very similar to what you're getting all over the field. But the straight cut, you can get a lot more variation. So adjusting for that and realizing that some of that variation is going to cause 
cause some grief, maybe some more rotor loss or some more rotor issues, mm -hmm. just adjusting for that in your settings. Okay, so Ian, once you've actually looked at the back, you've realized that you do have losses coming out of the back end, you figured out where they're coming from, what would be your next move when it comes to your combine settings? Yeah, so I would start with maybe, let's say we have rotor loss. If we have rotor loss, if, we, if we're, we're probably not threshing it enough, maybe it's the variety's a little harder to thresh or the conditions are tough, we'd want to maybe speed up our rotor. Maybe we'd speed it up by 50 or 100 RPM at a time. And maybe we'd tighten the concaves a little bit just to make sure we're getting enough threshing to make sure the seeds are busting out, open out, out of the pods. Right. Now, if we find out we have cleaning losses, which is probably more common in canola, we want to adjust. We have two things we can adjust, the sieves and the fan. So again, if we're throwing over, maybe we should open up the sieve a little bit. Opening up the sieve might mean that the sample going into the, ca into the hopper is a little dirtier, but again, you kind of keep that in mind. You know, better to have a slightly dirtier sample, but have it in the, in the hopper versus out in the field. Right. But we can also adjust the fan at the same time. So maybe we speed up the, or we slow the fan down by 100. That being said, you can get enough where if you don't have enough fan speed, you're going to kind of slough it through and it's not truly separating. So maybe if that doesn't seem to solve your problem, maybe take the fan and go the other way. Go up by 100 and just see. Is that, is that blowing out the chaff, doing a better job of blowing out the chaff? The key thing is to change one variable at a time mm -hmm. and then reassess the loss. Did okay. it make it better or worse? And sometimes with how things, how dynamic the things are, it might, it's hard to know where you, where your fit settings, current settings are and where you need to be, but change one thing up or down or change one, reassess and that made it better or worse. And sometimes it makes it worse and you're like, okay, well, wasn't that, at least, at least you've eliminated that and you can go on to the next variable to tweak. Right. And then how often, just like anecdotally, how often when you've been out in the field, do you end up needing to adjust your combine settings? Yeah, so if it's really, the really hot to really cool and you're running long days, sometimes we'll have a daytime and a nighttime setting. So kind of run two settings, because just because temperature and humidity and everything is changing so dramatically. Um, other than that, you might not have to change your settings very often until you may, but every time you pull into a different field with maybe a bit of a different history, a different variety, or maybe you sit for four days and you have rain, now you come back, sometimes it'll thresh a little differently. Either the canola is not as dry after the rain, or maybe that, that rain's kind of mellowed the crop and actually the material is busting up easier. And you don't want to over pulverize all the straw in your canola, because otherwise it makes it harder for the sieve to separate. So anytime there's kind of a, a change, a noticeable change in environment, conditions, uh, variety, it's a good time to reassess and make sure your settings are still the right ones. Well, that's a lot of fantastic information. Do you have any words of encouragement as we go into this combining season? You know, it, it's tough once you get into actual combine season. We just want to get acres in the bin, and that's tough, right? We, we're, we're almost there. The crop's almost in the bin. Harvest losses is one of those last things to make sure the canola seeds actually get into the bin. So take a little time, set yourself up, whatever makes it easy for you, whether it's a person dedicated to checking losses or, a, you know, a drop pan that makes it easier. Just make sure it's easy so you can do it often. That makes sense. Well, thank you so much. And that was Ian Epp on Real Agriculture.